three. Anyway, so here we are, Zurich, Zurich. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the people, talk about the people. No, let's start with the trains, we'll start with the trains. Let's start with the infrastructure, because it is unbelievable. There is underground, there is trains overground, there is bus services, there is a tram. There is such a beautiful cycle tracks. Walkers are segregated from cyclists. Cyclists have as much room as what road users do. There's virtually no um, cars. And even right in the sun, there's no buses either. But there's no need for them. There's simply no need for them. Because the transport system is so intricate and it's so locked into you can the trams and the trains and everything is working all perfectly together. And that is where it comes. This is this if ever if anybody's ever owned a true Swiss watch, you'll know what I'm talking about the work the work perfectly and that's like their infrastructure of their transport system I've never seen anything like it it's crazy but I will talk about some of the ins and outs as for disabled people just one or two things to look out for um, you can travel anywhere as fast as you want to do is crazy and it's so simple it's it's nothing like what it is in England it's crazily you just simply walk into the station there's a, a board there that isn't one of those horrible little things with the, the orange dotty line things and and your train has been delayed that doesn't happen here this is Switzerland Everything happens on time, annoyingly, but <laughs> as for travel, it's crazy, it's it just really ludicrously simple to go anywhere in this, this city. Um, in any different mode of transport. Uh, I went from the hotel, which is where the airport is, which is a, a good distance away from the actual city centre. And whereas we would use these little trains that chug from little station to little station at, uh, at no kind of speed at all, like literally you could walk faster than sometimes. These things, the trains, tip for you. Put your brakes on, you'll be out my back. Braking, or take it off, bend over, put your brakes on, and you're away. And I'm, you think I'm kidding, but I am. It takes so little time to get from station to station, spot to spot, everywhere you go. The double decker um, carriages, the, I will talk about the cleanliness of the whole bloody place and even, oh sorry as well, uh, slap on the old wrist. Um, but yeah, the train's absolutely bang on, absolutely fantastic. You sat in there, you just look at a, a, like a big screen, it's a proper screen, you can see exactly as your station is dropping off, dropping off, dropping off, da, 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 bang, you're there, jump off the train. Now, another little tip. Uh, now, in England we have a, a conductor and a, and a driver. Mm, they're not here. It's Swiss. We can do without that man. But the unfortunate thing is the trains do move on the platforms. If they've got a particularly long train, uh, it sometimes they want it to, they, the doors will open. And if it needs to shunt on a little bit, it will do that very, very slowly. But be aware that sometimes you're just about to get off the train will just slowly drift on a little bit further. That's where the doors open, believe it or not. True. I was very surprised about that one. Um, also, 
Now you've got to kind of understand the Swiss way of thinking. Everything is uh, once you get your head round they don't think like a Yorkshireman. No, forget that. They don't think like uh, well I would put it there. You see with well, this everything has got to be a logical. If you think if you think like uh, Spock of uh, Star Trek, where you got to think logical. Where would the, where would they think? Of, how would they, would they think? And it, and then once you start to think like that, everything works brilliantly. I want you to understand that. But another thing you've got to watch out for in all these. There's kind of no crime here. There's no there's no nothing here. No, nobody it does anything wrong. Um, it's like when you go, there's nobody checking your tickets. You, you, you could have not bought a ticket, but nobody ever checks them. You could get on, get off, and nobody even know. I'm not giving you tips. I paid for my ticket, but I'm saying that that's the way the trust, the trusting kind of thing. The coffee machines, you trust it to go and get coffee. Yes, it's expensive, but you trust it to use it and pay whenever and how many you've had. You've got to understand as well, I came in and when the train comes in, it goes on the underground section, it comes from the overground section and it goes underneath Zurich and comes out in the underground. You've got to remember that all these stations are all one on top of the other. So you've got the lower level, then the higher level, then you've got the main train station and it goes on and on. But it's so easy to use. So you've got like the underground and everything is all interconnected. So every you move up a level, then you're on the uh, trains that are going all over the lake or wherever they're going, um, and different trains for different are on different levels. You just once you start to work it out, understand it. It's, it really makes sense. It's straightforward. Once you get that into your head, think like Swiss. Think like one of them watches. Right, it's precise, it's going to do what it says. Use logic, not Yorkshire thinking. So, once you get your head around that one, and just calm yourself up, have a little think about things before you actually start doing this. It is so simple, I promise you, it's ridiculous. One thing don't do, just don't do it. See me, when I came in, I was just about to say before, I came on on the underground section and I couldn't see a lift and of course the old usual is what we do when we sat in wheelchairs you know some of us you know uh, especially the young lads I'm not exactly a young lad but once you know how to use um, escalators in a wheelchair it becomes kind of a bit of second nature so, of course, I set off going up the escalator in the wheelchair. Now, you don't do that kind of thing in Switzerland. They don't see it like we do. I tell you what, if you want to get a slap on the back of the wrist, then uh, that's the way to go about it. So there is do's and don'ts, believe me. Now I'll just move on to another little thing there that I did notice. When a red light, when you're walking around, not walking, but wheeling around, when you see the lights, when it says a red light, it means here, it really does mean a red light. When it says it's an orange light, that's a little bit in between, and when it's green, it's green. As back in our country, we, we just, uh, right, if there's no car coming, we're just going to go across the crossing. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, no, you don't do that here. Regardless of what's on the road, when it's red, you don't go across the road. No, there'll be somebody coming trying to drag you back. 
the other is nothing there. Another little quirks that I've noticed. Another little thing you notice. No litter, litter boxes, litter, litter, litter bins, litter bins. Not in the city centre or anywhere else I've come across. Nowhere outside. They don't have litter bins. There's no, there's no refuge collector has to go and empty the bins. There is not. Because the Swiss don't do that kind of thing. They don't drop litter on the floor. They don't uh, drop litter in litter boxes. They take it home and get rid of it that way. You've got to think Swiss. That saved a load of jobs, saved a load of money, and people take it home. Because the good people, they don't want to do bad things. Uh, When I came back to the hotel from town, <laughs> believe it or not, I just asked the uh, last there that was in a, I presume they're their kind of their version of transport police, uh, about uh, what level was this uh, to get back on the underground uh, system. Oh, uh, right, just uh, two seconds, sir. Uh, right, well, in, the, in that kind of, do I do yeah, uh, kind of Germanish sort of accent, you know, and uh, you stay there, you just, uh, uh, whatever. Anyway, well, uh, she took me all the way through the system with one of the mates, two of the mates anyway, uh, and they took me down, you know, you follow me. Oh, I, I, I took right, you better keep up. Uh, yeah, yeah, anything you say, uh, and stop here. And then we got on and, uh, and then and, uh, right to the train, got me on the train. And he was like, I only asked the question, but she insisted on helping right to the end of the, the trip. Oh, there's another one for you. When I got on from the hotel, and they, they, you just, I only had to go about 200 yards from the hotel to the train station. Got to the train station and... Um, it, it was like an underpassy kind of thing, you know, a pedestrian underpassy kind of thing. It was really quite, uh, quite a state one, but we got there, you know. It, it was for, it was, it was all on the one that needs a way out, in and out of it. Uh, I must say that, like, I was very surprised that the old Swiss hadn't gone out a bit better. But anyway, never mind. Um, these long videos are going to be too long, I know. But, um, yeah. So I get gets on the platform and I cast a ticket machine, can't find one. Anyway, a bloke uh, come up to me and I was trying to say, you know, how would I get a ticket or whatever? And uh, he talked absolutely brilliant English. And, oh, I'll go and get you one. He went all the way down through the subway up the other side, went to the actual bit where he could get a ticket, come back, put it in my hand, explained how the system worked, and wouldn't take any payment for it. Another nine, well, it is more than nine pound, fifteen quid. Won't bother. Crazy. Anything to help anybody, it seems. Anyway, I will stop at that point and we will rejoin Zurich in Power